Hi, Happy New Year! It's been a little bit, but um, I went through my New Year's resolutions, the ones that I wrote down last year this time, and the one that I'm most proud of achieving, or even more than that, was the goal I set to make 5,000 euros in illustration in 2023. And now, looking back, I, uh, <laughs> I've kept my finances pretty organized this year, so it was easy to see that I more than doubled that amount. So my goal was 5,000 euros and I just surpassed 10k. So, and I'm not confident talking about these numbers and it looks like not many people on the internet are. It's super hard. I've struggled the most in this trying to be an illustrator with how much to charge for certain projects. So that's why I will try to talk more about the numbers as well. I know it's not crazy, 10k, you still can't live of it, but I've kept a side job for the whole year, but still it's a very nice number for me. It's a very big step up from a year before. So now that it's a fresh new year, I want to go through all the illustrations I did last year, see for myself what worked, what didn't work, and uh, tell you what I learned from each of the projects, how I got the jobs. So the first project I worked on in 23 was the book, which was a great start of the year. And also my biggest and longest project so far. Um, I got this job, we started talking about it in the summer of 2022. It was the time where I started reaching out to potential clients. It took me so long to feel confident with my illustration skill. Um, an experience to start reaching out. I started by reaching out to publishing houses and magazines, mostly in Slovenia, a little bit in Germany as well. It takes time for this to work, but what worked with this one was that my aunt um, was the sister of the writer of Giga, and she gave me his contact and I wrote him and it worked out. So he introduced me to the publishing house they, of course, were um, willing to work with me, like they liked my illustrations. It's also, I mean, I know contacts like this do help, but they still need to see that you're going to be able to do the project and they can put their name on it and invest and sell it. So it does really help to use contacts like this, but uh, still developing the skill is super important. But this gave me a lot of confidence to go on and now this year I am going to take this switching out super seriously and I'm starting it today on the 8th of January. <laughs> it took me three months to finish this, um, all of the illustrations for the book and it was a really nice way to survive Berlin winter which is sad and grey and it was just really helpful to have a long project to focus on and then to know that by the time I'm done, it's gonna be spring, it's gonna get warmer and I really enjoyed focusing on this like long-term thing. Then while I was working on the book, I um, didn't focus on much else. I was still going to the shop twice a week and I took one little project designing little postcards for a little local wine and craft beer shop, K1. They commissioned me to just have them in their shop for the customers to buy as little cards to go with the wines and beers that they sell. Then there's this little random illustration I did for CB for Valentine's Day. I'm gonna put it here because I don't know, I just really liked how it turned out. And then it was spring and uh, the weather was horrible in Berlin. Just rain and rain and rain. So I decided to make this little comic I was really happy how they turned out, so I got them made as uh, business cards as well. And then also as these thank you cards that I um, use for when I do commissions. I don't sell this because it's my face on them all, so... Um, but they're the same designs as on the cards. And then in May, it was the third or second birthday of uh, Fulk Berlin, uh, Kids Tour in Kreuzberg. 
and I met the owner Sarah the year before at a Christmas market in Soho House where we were both selling and um, she came up to me then and asked me if I would, I would be interested in drawing live at this event and I've never done something before like this and I was super excited I was really interested in trying it so I did some practicing and in May we set up this little table at the birthday party of the shop and uh, yeah, it was a real success, I think. And again, another proof for that reaching out and just being out there, showing your work and talking to people really does help. I really want to do more stuff like this this year, so I'm not yet sure if it's going to be like shops or events or even just markets. Then we went to New York um, on a trip. I did this little animations for the vlog and the only drawing I did was this Guggenheim visit drawing, which I tagged on Instagram. And I used to do this quite often. I used to tag places and brands on Instagram and then like sometimes I would get noticed and they would repost or sometimes a job would come out of them. And with this one, I didn't even know, but uh, Guggenheim Museum has this thing on Instagram called uh, Frank Lloyd Wright Fridays where they post what different artists or illustrators make after their visit of the Guggenheim. And this one got posted and then one curator asked me if I would be willing to sell this drawing and I did, so <laughs> that was fun. Um, I did lots of private commissions this year and um, I did this little post or a PDF also, where I have all the information about what I can do and what, I, what information I need and all the pricing, which really saved me a lot of time. And I will continue doing this this year, um, probably not all the time, but uh, if I have time, I'll take them. If I know I have a lot of time, I'll advertise that I'm doing them and hopefully some orders come. Then in August, September time, I worked for this animation studio and I did the illustration, I did the animation. We worked on a project for a European Union. I signed a contract, a non-disclosure thing that I can't show. I couldn't sign the, the project. It's very strict like that, so I can't really show you what I did. But it's going to be a series and I'm going to do more. And how that happened was that one of these animation guys from this animation studio that I worked with um, also came to that live drawing uh, thing at Folk Berlin and I drew his daughter <laughs> and then he was watching what I was drawing and then asked me if I'd be interested in doing something with them, with the animation studio and it's amazing how every time you go out and you show yourself and you talk to people something works out so and still now this series is gonna continue and I am starting an internship with them very soon. So it's amazing what happened with that. Then there was this little random commission for this baby concert thing in Berlin. I don't know, <laughs> it is what it is. Like it wasn't my favorite project. It was a bit difficult to communicate with this person, but it's okay, they were, they were happy in the end. I attempted October this year. I didn't last. I just had other things going on with illustration and I couldn't couldn't commit to it. I did my first magazine illustration. I did one once in 2022, but didn't em end up being used in the uh, uh, magazine. And then this one, Titi's a Baunik, is my first one in print. And then another magazine job, which was also a result of reaching out, but that was about three years ago that I reached this German magazine. I even made like a little test illustration for them. I sent them this with some other examples that of my illustrations. I didn't get any replies, I forgot about it. It's been three years and now I got this offer to, to draw for this magazine for the whole year for a column. So it's gonna be six editorial illustrations with a spot in 2024. And I'm super excited. The first one I've already sent off and I think it's gonna be in print sometime in January. And another magazine job came in for a Slovenian, for a small Slovenian magazine called Galip. I met one of their editors in Ljubljana at the book fair. He was there and he was asking if I'd be interested in drawing for this magazine and I did a little job and it was a really fun one. I'm looking forward to seeing it in print. 
Also for the book event, I did a poster to market the events, the presentation. September, I went to Slovenia and we had, I think, six presentations in different kindergartens, libraries and a cafe. And we used this poster to promote it. And then at the end of that, I made these little cards with the illustration of Giga and me making the presentation. And I sent it off to all these people who helped, helped organize everything, to the publishing house. I think they also use it for some marketing. Then another really nice job was for Innofarma, which is my aunt's company, the one that made this happen also, helped. <laughs> she has a pharmaceutical company. She hired me to draw some illustrations for marketing and for social media. And it's really nice to have some examples of something more in this field. And I will definitely try to reach out with these examples to more similar companies. And then the last thing I did was this Christmas card for my mom. She asked me for a custom Christmas card design for her to send to her friends, colleagues. And another Christmas card for my friend that's a dentist. And she's been now <laughs> commissioning me to do these cards for an, uh, three years or so. And I did her business cards and I did her um, moving cards and appointment little tickets. So it's a nice ongoing project. That was it for 2023. I'm gonna sit down here now and make some sort of a plan or just little direction for this year. Yeah, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you found some ideas. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.